Alrighty. Welcome to a new unit. We are on unit six or PS six. Um, we're going to start with unit 6.1. So make sure you have your notes paper and we're going to get started. This lesson is a little weird to do over video, but we're going to still try it. So put your name here. It says converting units, warm up, estimating lengths. Your teacher will assign you one of the following lengths, one centimeter, one foot, one inch, one meter, one yard. So you're just trying to think, what are these measurements? How long are these measurements? And make your best guess with a piece of string, for example. Um, if you do not have a piece of string, we will just use a tape measure. So if I'm just doing one centimeter, if I have a yardstick, one centimeter is just this long. It's just super, super tiny super tiny. So you could just think, okay, my measurement of a centimeter could be like the length of a fingernail, for example. Um, one foot. One foot is the same as 12 inches. So if I'm thinking one foot, I'm going to use my inches side and goes to 12 inches. So it's from here to here. A lot of times we think, okay, from my elbow to my hand kind of could be somewhere around 12 inches. Obviously mine would be longer than yours, but maybe for you guys it might be something like that. Okay, one inch. One inch is a lot of times the length from here to here. So one inch is about that. Or mine is like exactly one inch. So one inch is about that from here to here. Um, one meter. So one meter or one yard are both going to be about the same. So they're about this long, about three feet. Okay, so um, we have those measurements. You can... Um, order those measurements from smallest to biggest if we don't have a string. So the smallest one is going to be one centimeter. Then it's going to be one inch because one inch is about three, um, two and a half centimeters. About. So then we have one foot and then we have one meter or one yard, whichever one you want to put. I'm just going to put one yard, okay, because I know one yard is two feet. So from smallest to biggest, that would, would be what I put. So you can just put that instead of the string one for today. Okay, moving on to today's goal. I can convert measurements from one unit to another. Um, when I read or hear a unit of measurement, I know whether it is used to measure length, weight, or volume. So we're going to practice some of that. So activity number one on your paper is a card sort. We're going to skip that for this video. We will do this as a class, most likely. If we don't do it as a class, then at least do activity two and three. So activity two, we're going on a road trip. Um, if we see a sign on the highway that looks like this, that means we're going, the maximum speed you should go is 80 miles per hour, right? You, it means technically you shouldn't go over that or under, and then you could go somewhere under it, but not too much under. So we're going to answer these questions. Still on this unit, we can use tables every time. Tables are our friends. It says Elena and her mom are on a road trip outside the United States. Elena sees this road sign. Elena's mom is driving 75 miles per hour when she gets pulled over for speeding. So she's going 75 miles per hour, and it says she's speeding, but the, the sign says 80. The police officer explains that eight kilometers is approximately five miles. So really what this is saying is, the maximum is eight kilometers, 80 kilometers, and usually it's 80 miles per hour. Um, so how many kilometers are in one mile? So we're gonna draw a table, tables are our friends. We've got kilometers and we've got miles. Okay, and we're gonna put our first ratio of kilometers to miles. So we have eight to five. So I'm gonna put it on my table. I'm gonna pause the video if I need some time to write it on my paper. Then I can draw a new row. It says how many kilometers are in one mile. So I'm gonna put one here under the miles. And then I'm gonna think, okay, how do I get from five to one? Since it is getting smaller, I am dividing instead of multiplying. So I'm dividing by five. Five divided by five is one. So I'm gonna divide the other side by five. Eight divided by five, fractions mean division. So eight divided by five, I could write as eight over five, eight fifths, okay? So that means one mile is about eight fifths of a kilometer. I'm gonna convert this. 
I know five goes into eight one time with three left over. So I could write it as one and three fifths. I could also take it one step further. I know three fifths is equivalent to six tenths if I multiply by two, multiply by two. So six tenths, which would be equal to 1.6. Six tenths is equal to 1.6. I'm gonna write this right here. Okay. I'm gonna create a new row. So when it says how many kilometers are in one mile, I'm gonna say 1.6 kilometers or you could say it, you could say one and three fifths. Okay. The next question is a little different. How many miles are in one kilometer? So I'm going to draw a new row. How many miles are in one kilometer? So I'm going to kilometers and I'm going to put one under the kilometers this time. Okay. And I'm trying to see, and I'm going to use blue here, one kilometer. I'm going to try to see how do I get from eight to one? So to get from 8 to 1, we divide by 8. So that means I'm going to divide 5 by 8. And again, you can just do 5 divided by 8. Fractions mean division. So if you want, you can just keep it as 5 eighths. And I can't simplify that fraction. I can turn it into a decimal. But I could just keep my answer like that as well. So I'm going to say in how many miles? 5 eighths miles in one kilometer. 5 eighths of a mile. So, question two. If the speed is 80 kilometers per hour and Elena's mom was driving 75 miles per hour, was she speeding? So let's see. Let's try to convert. So we can either convert um, 75 miles to kilometers or we can convert 80 kilometers to miles. We can pick which one we want to do. Either one will work just fine. So I'm going to do... I'm going to convert my miles to kilometers. So I'm going to see, or I'm going to see how many kilometers is 75 miles. So if she's going 75 miles per hour, let's see how many kilometers per hour that is. So I'm going to use this unit rate to help me get there. Okay, so I'm looking at how can I get from 1 to 75. So I'm going to multiply by 75 to get to 75. 1 times 75 is 75. So that means I'm going to multiply 1.6 by 75 and then that can help me get there. So let's do it. 75 times 1.6. I'll put an X for multiply. There is one number after the decimal place, so then I can erase. Okay, 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 7 is 42. Plus 3 is 45. Then I add a 0 for a placeholder. 1 times 5. 1 times 7, and then we add our x. Add in 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, 4 plus 7 is 11, plus 1 is 12. And then I'm going to put one number after the decimal point. So here's my answer. That means 120 kilometers per hour is the same as 75 miles per hour. So yikes, she was very much speeding. I'm going to say um, she was going... 120 kilometers per hour. Way too fast. <laughs> right? It's going um, 40 kilometers too fast per hour. And I can show my show my work to explain that answer. Okay? So we gotta pay attention to different units of measurement because miles and kilometers are going to give you different values. So make sure you have this written down, pause it if you need to. Moving on to activity number three. So we got weights, um, weights of animals and things like that. So we have on here, a veterinarian uses weights and kilograms to figure out what dosages of medicine to prescribe for animals. For every 10 kilograms, there are 22 pounds, okay? So that is our ratio. Our ratio is 10 kilograms to 22 pounds. Calculate each animal's weight in kilograms. Explain or show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a double number line or table. Tables are a friend. I'm going to use a table always, always, always. Double number lines are great too, but tables are even better in my opinion. So I'm going to set up my table. My two categories are kilograms and pounds. 
So I'm going to put kg for kilograms, and then I'm going to put pounds. And make sure you write your work on your paper as you go. Make sure you're understanding and stopping when you get stuck or need more time. So I'm going to put my table 10 kilograms and 22 pounds. That's the ratio I'm going off of. Um, so we can start working. So Fido the Labrador weighs 88 pounds. We're trying to find out what it weighs in kilograms, so which is a different unit. So I'm going to put 88 under pounds. And I can use this ratio right away to help me get there. I know 22 times 4 is 88. So I'm going to multiply 10 times 4, which would give me 40. So I'm going to put right here that he weighs 40 kilograms. 88 pounds is the same as 40 kilograms. It's a different unit of measure. OK, that's question A. Question B says spot the beagle weighs 33 pounds. 33 pounds. I'm not going to know quite yet how to get to 33 pounds, so I'm going to make a ratio that's going to make it easier for me. So I know if I want to get to 11 pounds, 22 divided by 2 would give me 11 pounds, and I know then I could multiply 11 by 3 to get to 33. So I'm going to use that ratio to help me get there. So 22 divided by 2 is 11. So that means I'm going to divide 10 by 2. And then now I have the different ratio. 10 divided by 2 is 5. OK, so 5 to 11 is a ratio that can help me get to 33. Because I know 11 times 3 is 33. So that means I'm going to multiply 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is 15. So that helped me get to my answer for B. So I'm going to put over here, oh, I know 15 kilograms is the same as 35 pounds. So 15 kilograms is what that dog weighs. OK. Now we have five and a half pounds. So we're going to put five and a half. And you can write five and a half, or you can write it as 5.5 pounds. We're trying to see what would go here on our table. This is for question C. How many kilograms is 5.5 pounds? Again, each time you could come up with a unit rate, right? or you can use your other ratios. So I'm going to use this ratio right here, 5 to 11, because I know if I divide 11 by 2, I get 5.5. So I'm going to divide 5 by 2 to figure out what this ratio is. So I know 5 divided by 2 is fractions mean division, so 5 halves, which is the same as 2 and a half or 2.5. So I'm going to write that. 2.5 kilograms for that question. That's question C. So our tables are our friends. They can help us get there. We can come up with new equivalent ratios that make it easier to go step by step. You have worked any way you need to. Okay, question two. A certain medication says it can only be given to animals over, so sorry if you can't see this very well, over 25 kilograms. Over 25 kilograms. Okay, um, how much is this in pounds? So we're trying to get from kilograms to pounds this time. So I'm going to erase my table and draw a new one. Okay, so we're trying to see what is 25 kilograms in pounds. So I'm going to use my table. Tables are our friends, and you could use the same table you had before. We got kilograms and we got pounds, and we know the ratio is 10 kilograms. 22 pounds, remember, from here. Okay, now we're going to use that to get to 25 kilograms. So to get to 25 kilograms, I don't know what I multiply 10 by quite to get to 25, so I'm going to first find out what 5 is. So I know 10 divided by 2 is 5, so I'm going to divide 22 divided by 2. And 22 divided by 2 would give me 11. Now I'm going to use that ratio to extend, and I'm going to use a different color. So I'm trying to get from 5 kilograms to 25 kilograms, and we're going to see how many pounds is that. So what do we multiply 5 by to get to 25? It is getting bigger, so that means we're multiplying. 5 times 5 is 25, so that means I'm going to multiply 11 by 5. Let's see if you can see that. 11 times 5 is 55. So that means 
A certain medication says it can only be given to animals over 25 pounds. That means animals over 55 pounds. And I showed my work. So I'm going to say 25 kilograms equals 55 pounds. Okay? So that means the medication could be given to um, Fido because he's over 55 pounds. It could not be given to Beagle. It could not also be given to the Chihuahua because they don't weigh enough. But Fido, the Labrador, could take it because he weighs enough. Alrighty, lastly, we're getting to our cool down. Cool down, cool down, cool down. Um, oh, there is no cool down on this. So what you're gonna do is you are going to get on campus. You are gonna do your practice problems. And once you finish your practice problems, you're gonna let me know and then you will do your master check because you're gonna turn into your notes into the basket and do practice problems. If you finish, then you have an IXL skill to work on when you're done. Thanks for watching the video.